हेलो आई एम सायंतिका अधिकारी एंड आई विल बी सर्विंग एज एन ऑडियो नेविगेटर फॉर दिस सब्जेक्ट मटेरियल साइंस द सिलेबस ऑफ मटेरियल साइंस इज डिवाइडेड इनटू एट सेक्शंस सेक्शन वन प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ मटेरियल्स सेक्शन टू कैरेक्टराइजेशन टेक्निक्स सेक्शन थ्री स्ट्रक्चर एंड इम्परफेक्शंस सेक्शन फोर थर्मोडाइनमिक्स एंड काइनेटिक्स सेक्शन फाइव प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मटेरियल्स सेक्शन सिक्स मटेरियल टाइप्स सेक्शन सेवन एनवायरमेंटल डिग्रेडेशन एंड सेक्शन एट एलिमेंट्स ऑफ क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स एंड मैथमेटिक्स इन दिस ऑडियो आई शेल डिस्कस विथ यू ऑन सेक्शन सिक्स विच इज मटेरियल टाइप्स The subtopics of this section are concept of amorphous single crystals and polycrystalline materials crystallinity and its effect on physical properties metal ceramic polymers classification of polymers polymerization structure and properties additives for polymer products processing and applications effect of environment on materials and composites starting with crystals you are already familiar with the crystal symmetry and crystallographic direction and planes from the third section which is structure and imperfections which we have already discussed now here we have all we will discuss about the types of material materials are classified into three types metals polymers and ceramics polymers are further classified into crystalline semi crystalline and amorphous materials now the concept of amorphous materials also known as non crystalline materials lack a systematic and regular arrangement of atoms over relatively large atomic distances such materials are also known as super cooled liquids silica glass is an example of amorphous material polymers may be completely non crystalline and semi crystalline consisting of varying degrees of crystallinity now silicon dioxide that is silica in non crystalline state is called fused silica or vitreous silica other oxides like b2o3 and germanium oxide germanium dioxide may also form glassy structures the common inorganic glasses that are used for containers windows and so on are silica glasses to which have been added other oxides such as calcium oxide and sodium dioxide this oxide do not form polyhedral networks next is the single crystals for a crystalline solid when the periodic and repeated arrangement of atoms is perfect or extends throughout the entirety of the specimen without interruption the result is a single crystal all unit cells interlock in the same way and have the same orientation single crystals exist in nature but they may also be produced artificially then the polycrystalline materials most crystalline solids are composed of a collection of many crystals or grains such materials are termed as polycrystalline materials now a term anisotropy comes into let me elaborate it 
द फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ सिंगल क्रिस्टल्स ऑफ सम सब्सटेंस डिपेंड ऑन द क्रिस्टलोग्राफिक डिरेक्शन इन विच मेजरमेंट्स आर टेकन फॉर एग्जाम्पल द इलास्टिक मॉड्यूलर्स द रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स एंड द इलेक्ट्रिकल कंडक्टिविटी मे हैव डिफरेंट वैल्यूज इन डिरेक्शंस द डिरेक्शनलिटी ऑफ प्रॉपर्टीज इज टर्म्ड एनिसोट्रोपी and it is associated with the variance of atomic or ionic spacing with crystallographic directions substance in which measured properties are independent of the direction of measurement are isotropic the extent and magnitude of anisotropic effects in crystalline materials are functions of the symmetry of the crystal structure the degree of anisotropy increases with decreasing structural symmetry triclinic structures normally are highly anisotropic for many polycrystalline materials the crystallographic orientation of the individual grains are totally random the next subtopic is metals metal alloys by virtue of its composition is grouped into two classes that is ferrous and non-ferrous ferrous alloys are those in which iron is the prime constituent produced in larger quantities ferrous alloys are generally steels and cast irons steels are iron carbon alloy that may contain appreciable concentration of other alloying elements some common steels are classified according to carbon concentration namely into low medium and high carbon types plain carbon steel contain only residual concentration of impurities other than carbon and a little manganese steels are classified into low alloy and high alloy low alloy is further divided into low carbon medium carbon and high carbon steel the high alloy is divided into tool and stainless alloys the low carbon alloy is of two types plain and high strength low alloy the medium carbon alloy is also of two types plain and heat treatable the high carbon alloy is also of two types plain and tool alloy generically cast irons are a class of ferrous alloys with carbon contents above 2.14 weight percent now cast irons are classified into gray iron ductile also known as nodular iron white iron malleable iron now the non ferrous alloys where the alloys are not iron based and includes copper aluminum magnesium titanium alloys the refractory metals the super alloys the noble metals including those that have nickel lead tin zirconium and zinc as base metals alloys are so brittle that forming or shaping by appreciable deformation is not possible are cast classified as cast alloys and those that are amenable to mechanical deformation are termed wrought alloys the compositions mechanical properties and typical applications different types of non ferrous alloys are important next sub topic is ceramics ceramic materials are classified into glasses clay products refractories abrasives 
cement and advanced ceramics. This classification is based on the applications. Get a scrupulous study on various types of ceramics along with examples. There are often multiple choice questions on the applications of various ceramic materials. Now the polymers. Polymers include plastics, elastomers also known as rubbers, fibers, coatings, adhesives, foams and films. A particular polymer depending on its properties can be used in more than two applications. Plastics are either thermoplastics or thermosets. Their trade names along with the characteristics and typical applications are needed to study. Now the important ones are polyethylene, polypropylene, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, polyamide, polymethyl methacrylate, polycarbonate, polystyrene, polyvinyls, polyethylene terephthalates, epoxies, phenolics, polyesters. Next is elastomers. Natural polyisoprene, styrene butadiene copolymer, acrylonitrile butadiene copolymer, chloroprene and polysilicoexane. These are five commercial elastomers. Their characteristics and typical applications are very important for gate. Multiple choice questions. In 2015, there was a multiple choice question carrying one mark asking to determine what type of material is Teflon. The answer is thermoplastic. In 2014, two multiple choice questions carrying one mark each on neoprene and nylon 6 was asked. In 2013, a multiple choice question on vulcanization was asked carrying one mark. In 2012, a multiple choice question on match the material with appropriate applications was asked carrying two marks. Thus, it is very important to be thorough with the materials along with their applications. Again in 2011, a multiple choice question to determine ceramics was asked of one mark. If you are familiar with the ceramic materials, you can answer this one. A multiple choice question to, the, to match the material with their applications was asked carrying two marks thus two to four marks can be predicted from here in the next subtopic we shall discuss on the polymerization terms like functionality the chemical formula you have to be familiar with this there are two types of polymerization chain and step growth chain polymerization includes free radical ionic coordination polymerization it is characterized by self addition of the monomer molecules to each other very rapidly through a chain reaction whereas step growth polymerization here the polymer build up proceeds through a reaction between functional groups of the monomers. The reaction takes place in a stepwise manner like polycondensation, polyaddition, polymerization, ring open polymerization. The next subtopic is structure and properties which includes the structure of different polymeric materials especially of plastics, their structure 
and properties as i have already mentioned earlier the polyethylene polypropylene polymethyl methacrylate polyamide polyvinyls polyesters etc next is the additives for polymer products this includes fillers plasticizers lubricants anti aging additives flame retardants blowing agents cross linking agents and colorants multiple choice questions asking to match the additives with their appropriate examples are often asked carrying two marks fillers are particulate fillers reinforcing fillers rubbery fillers resins fibrous fillers and cork particulate fillers are of two types inert fillers and reinforcing fillers inert fillers are china clay talc calcium carbonate and barium sulfate whereas reinforcing fillers are calcium silicate carbon black silicas ammonium hydroxide zinc oxide rubbery fillers which are either reactive or non reactive for example styrene butadiene rubber and polybutadiene in polystyrene next ethylene propylene rubber in polypropylene then butadiene acrylonitrile rubber in pvc resins these are incorporated inside the rubbers for example butadiene styrene where 90% styrene is used in rubber for shoe soling and car wash brushes then fibrous fillers which are random or laminar random fillers are viscous carbon fiber cotton flakes paper wood floor etc laminar is again divided into organic and inorganic zinc chromate is an example of organic laminar filler whereas asbestos glass fibers are example of inorganic laminar filler next comes plasticizers which includes phthalates phosphates and sebacates for example triatolyl phosphate triazylyl phosphate etc next is lubricants lubricants are of three types the first graphite or molybdenum sulfide next the external lubricants which are paraffin wax calcium lead cadmium ethyl palmitate stearic acid and barium salts external lubricants are when a material exudes during processing from polymer composition to the interface between the molten polymer and a metal surface of the processing equipment a thin film is formed resulting in prevention of polymer sticking to the metal surface the third is internal lubricant it helps the polymer with flow properties and improves viscosity for example amine wax montane wax ester derivatives glyceryl ester glyceryl mosterate cetyl palmitate next is the anti aging additives which includes anti oxidants and are divided into amines and phenols then un- under anti aging additives comes uv absorbers which include salicylate benzoate substituted monohydroxy benzophenone substituted dihydroxy benzophenone benzotriazole triazine acrylonitrile derivatives and oxygen now terms like quenching agent is very important 
for example nickel chelates then the next filler is flame retardants which include ammonium hydroxide magnesium hydroxide borate compounds like zinc borate organohalogen organochlorine like chlorendic acid derivatives chlorinated paraffin wax etc now one of the most common example of flame retardants are antimony trioxide antimony dioxide then the next type of filler is blowing agent which includes carbonamide nitrosoamine hydrazide terephthalamide inorganic compounds like sodium bicarbonate hydrazine azo isobutyronitrile and acid azide then the cross linking agent which are vulcanizing agent like sulfur selenium sulfur monochloride for dyeing rubbers next formaldehyde for phenolic resins third diisocyanates for polyesters or polyethers then peroxide for unsaturated polyesters and next the polyamine for fluoroester elastomers epoxy resins then the last is colorants which includes titanium oxide which is white in color now the next subtopic is the processing and application of polymers the processing includes injection molding blow molding extrusion molding calendering compression die casting rotational molding thermoforming foaming reinforcing fiber spinning and a detailed study on each of these processing techniques along with their applications are very much important there are often match the following from here carrying two marks so a detailed study is mandatory in this section next subtopic is composites these are materials created when two or more distinct and identifiable compounds are combined numericals carrying two marks are often asked from here now composites are classified into particle reinforced fiber reinforced and structural composites terms like matrix reinforcement are required to solve the numericals so go through this topics understand them properly the various polymer matrix materials and reinforcements are very important the design properties of composites and composite system will help you to solve the numericals the elastic behavior along with longitudinal loading and transverse loading are very important the numericals are from this section generally solve as much as variety of problems related to these elastic behavior and the two types of loading memorize the various expressions coming under this section the conversion into gigapascal and megapascal is very common here in the numericals be careful with the conversions or you may lose your marks in 2014 a numerical answer type question was asked to determine the volume fraction of fibers then again a multiple choice question was asked to match the composite with the suitable application carrying 
two marks each. In 2013, a multiple choice question on composites was asked to determine the orientation of the fiber, whether it is transverse or longitudinal or random. In 2011, a linked answer question was asked on composite to determine the volume fraction percent and the total load carrying four marks. Now every year there is a numerical question from the composite alone. So give a thorough study and try to solve as much as problems from this section. With this here we complete our section 6 which is material types. A time period of 2-3 to three days should be given on this topic and try to complete it along with the numericals. Hope you have liked my audio. Wishing you good luck and thank you.